Hello everybody, I'm Shimmer and welcome to another episode of Noobing in Nern, a beginner's guide to Elder Scrolls Online. In today's guide, we are going to cover uh, equipment crafting. Now this guide will specifically cover woodworking, blacksmithing, and clothier. Now the reason I'm covering all three in this is because the layout of their stations and the overall crafting in all three of these is essentially identical. Woodworking will create staves, bows, and shields. Blacksmithing will create heavy armor and melee weapons. And Clothier will create light and medium armors. I will cover the skill lines, harvesting, uh, station layout, refining, crafting items, deconstruction, traits and trait research, how to level up efficiently, and writs, and then useful add-ons and tips. Of course, there will be time links below in the About section, so if you want to skip over some parts, you can. But for now, let's get to it. First off, let's take a look at the skill line. If you press K and under Crafting and select a profession, at the top you will see a bar with a level next to it. This is your current level in that crafting profession. Now, just because it says level 50 or level 10 doesn't mean you can craft higher gear just yet. You will first have to spend points on passive abilities as you unlock them to increase your overall skill level of crafting, the level of gear you can create, and the level of harvestables you can collect. The first passive ability is woodworking, blacksmithing, or tailoring, depending on which profession you're looking at. Now this will be your overall skill level in that profession. As you spend points in this, you will be able to craft higher level items and be able to harvest higher level materials. There are 10 total ranks in this ability. The next passive skill is Keen Eye. Spending points in this will add a glow to the harvestable material out in the wild, making it easier to spot from a distance. There are three total ranks in this. The first rank will add a glow from 20 meters or closer. The second rank will add a glow from 40 meters or closer, and the last rank will add a glow from 60 meters or closer. If you're just beginning, plants, wood, and ore might be troublesome for you to see, so until you train your eyes to spot these better from a distance, I recommend spending at least one point in keen eye so you can learn what the harvestables look like. The next passive is the hireling. By spending a point in this, you are basically hiring someone to mail you useful profession-specific items each day. The amount and the quality of the items you get mailed every day will depend on how many points you have spent in this. I always recommend spending the max amount of points here if you have them to spare, as getting free resources is always great. The next skill will be Extraction. Now this is super important. When refining materials, you have the chance to get profession ingredients and resins, tempers, or tannins, depending on which professions you're looking at. These are items that you will need to be able to upgrade your crafted piece of gear to a higher quality. The more points you spend in this, the better your chances of receiving these high-level materials are. You need to spend all three points in this when you have the points available. This is also a great way to make money if you spend a few hours harvesting, then come back and refine and sell all the uh, yellow materials you get from refinement. The next skill is Research Reduction. On most gear, you will notice they will have some sort of buff on them, giving them magicka, stamina, health, increased weapon and spell crit, that kind of thing. These buffs are called traits, and in order for you to be able to craft items with those traits on them, you will first have to research it in the crafting station. Let's say, for instance, you want to learn the training trait, which gives you extra XP, and craft gear with it on there. In order for you to be able to craft a piece of gear with tra the training trait on it, you will have to research that trait on each item that you want to be able to craft with it on it. Now, trait research takes real time. Each piece of armor or weapon you craft will have to be individually researched. The first trait on each piece of armor takes 6 hours. The second takes 12, third takes 24, fourth takes 48, and it doubles for each trait as you research for that one piece of gear. The last trait that you research on a piece of gear takes 64 days if you don't spend any points in this skill. Initially, you will only be able to research one item at a time. When you spend points in this passive, you will increase the number of items you can research 
up to three items at a time and reduce the amount of time it takes by 25% when you spend all three points in it. And that is huge. That takes that 64 day trait and makes it only 30 days for that last trait. Trait research is super important for a few reasons. The first reason is that some crafted sets are locked behind how many traits you have researched. For instance, Hunding's Rage Set requires that you have six traits researched in order to craft the item. This means all the pieces you plan on crafting in that set have to have had at least six traits researched on them. So let's say you want to make a chest and a pair of pants in Hunding's Rage. Uh, if you have seven traits researched on the pants and only five on the chest, you're only going to be able to uh, craft the pants in that set bonus. The chest you will not be able to craft until you complete researching that sixth trait. The second reason trait research is so important is because it is needed to retrait a piece of gear. If you loot a dungeon set item, say a monster helmet, and it dropped in defending, and you would like it to be infused, you can retrate it. In order to retrate that helm to a trait that you wish it to be, you will first have to have completed research on the infused trait, or whatever trait you would like it to be, in order to retrate that item. This will be super useful to you later on down the road as you're getting those hard to get dungeon and trial sets and being able to retrate those items because you've done the research. So doing some math, it takes each piece of gear 77 days, 19 hours, and 30 minutes to learn all nine traits if you have all the points spent in here with up to three at a time. Having ESO Plus also affects your research times, and if you're an ESO Plus member, that 77 days, 19 hours, and 30 minutes will come down to 70 days and 45 minutes per piece of armor or weapon for all nine traits. And that is a long time to learn all traits on woodworking for the six different item types. It would take at least a little bit over 140 days to complete all of woodworking. For Blacksmith and Clothier, it has 14 different uh, weapons and armor slots, and it would take a little over 326 days each profession to research all the traits. Um, this is why I say always, 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 always have something researching, whether you plan to use that profession or not, just for the just-in-case scenario. Um, because while, yes, you can always have someone craft you that set bonus, you can't have them retrait something for you. Plus, you can always have it working in the background. Um, and there are also some scrolls you can get from the store that will reduce the time taken. Uh, it is up to you whether you wish to purchase those items or not. The last passive ability on this line is your expertise with resins, tannin, or tempers. These are those green, blue, and yellow items you get from refining raw materials, and these are the items that you use to upgrade uh, armor to a higher quality. Spending points in this will lower the amount of those materials it takes to get a 100% guarantee of an upgrade. Now let's talk about raw materials and how you can find them. For ore, you will find those near rocks or cliffs. Uh, wood, you will find near trees. And for cloth, you're looking for plants that are out in the open. Leather comes off of any fuzzy creature that you kill. Now, what you can harvest and what is going to show up for you is going to depend on your character combat level and how many points you have spent in your woodworker, blacksmith, or clothier passive skill. So if you're a combat level 10 and have three points spent in the blacksmithing skill, you will be able to see both iron ore and orichalcum out in the wild. Because your player level is under 14 and that iron ore is the first material used to craft armor up to level 14. Since you have three points in blacksmithing skill, you will see orichalcum because you have the ability to craft up to 20, level 26 to 34 items. Once your player combat level increases to uh, 16, 15, 16, you will uh, still have those three points in blacksmithing. You will no longer see the iron and will only see steel in Orichalcum. Once you've gathered some raw materials, it's time to head to the crafting station. Once you enter the crafting station, the first thing that is going to come up is the refinement tab. And this is where you take those raw materials you just harvested and turn them into materials that you can use to create a piece of armor or a weapon. It takes 10 raw material to make items used to craft with, and refining ore will make ingots, 
refining plants or leather scraps will make cloth or leather, and refining rough woods will make sanded woods. As I briefly covered before, every time you refine, you have the chance to get items such as style materials, trait materials, and the tannin, temper, or rosins used to upgrade your gear you craft or loot. This is where spending those points come in. Refining materials does not yield crafting experience, which is called inspiration. The next tab over is the creation tab, and this is where you craft an actual piece of gear. Now, as I said before, all three crafting stations are essentially identical, except for Clothier does not have a weapons and armor tab like woodworking and blacksmithing. Here you will see the weapons and armor tab for blacksmithing, and here it is for woodworking, and here you will see the clothing station does not have that. The top slider will allow you to select which piece you wish to craft. For cloth, you have the ability to choose a shirt or a robe, which is super nice. <laughs> the second slider is the material section, and this is where you choose the item level you wish to craft. If you are just starting, you may only see one available. More will start to show as seen here, as you spend more points in your clothing, blacksmithing, or woodworking skills. There will be a plus or minus button, and this is because each type of material covers a range of levels. For the first tier of materials, this will craft up to level 14 items. You can craft even number level items. Every time you hit the plus button, it will take a little more materials to craft and increase the level of the armor by two. The third slider is the style section, and this is where you can choose the style of armor you wish to craft. Initially, you will only have your racial style known. You can learn new racial styles by finding different books and style recipes called motifs. These will change the look of the armor. There are many different types of motifs in game, and each motif type or style will have a specific way to obtain it. The common blue motif books for the base 9 races have a chance to drop in any container such as urns, lockboxes, wardrobes, chests, those types of places. There are four purple motifs that are more rare and can drop in the same way, and those are Daedric, Barbaric, Ancient Elf, and Primal. These four are more rare uh, than the base 9 motifs, but these motifs are entire books and will teach you um, how to craft that style for all weapons and all armor. You can also pick these up fairly inexpensively from a guild store. I loot so many of these blue um, race motifs that I just give them away to new players. Um, Imperial Style also has the chance to drop as an entire book and will teach you all weapons and armor, but it is legendary and has an extremely low drop rate. You can also purchase motif books from the Crown Store or Guild Store. Most of the other motifs you can learn will be broken down into 14 chapters and will cover every armor slot and each weapon type. So you will have to learn, for instance, the mace chapter and the helm chapter in order to craft a mace or a helm in that particular uh, style. So an example of that is the Dwemer style. These chapters have a chance to drop in any container in a Dwemer delve or Dwemer specific urn. So if you loot a Dwemer style chest piece and a Dwemer style mace, you will only be able to craft those two particular item slots in that style until you learn the rest of the chapters. There are many different styles to learn and you can see the different types and how to obtain them on a site called eso.mmo-fashion.com. This website is very robust and will show you all the different looks uh, of each of the styles and, and the different weights and how to obtain these style chapters. Now in order to craft these different styles, you must also obtain the style materials. And those will also have a specific way of obtaining them. The base 9 races you can get by refining raw materials, looting containers, or even uh, some crafting NPCs carry them. You also have a chance at getting style materials by breaking down a piece of gear. You can see a full list of motifs and what you have learned by pressing J and going to the lore library. This first section is the crafting motif library and will show you all the motifs that are learned by chapter. And you can see what you currently have knowledge of and what you still need to learn. The next section is the trait section, and this is where that research comes into play. 
You can only craft items in a trait that you have researched. On my character, I have researched and learned all clothier and woodworker traits, and I am only just now finishing blacksmithing and have a ways to go. So make sure you, again, are always researching something. When you create a piece of armor, you will gain some crafting experience, which again is called inspiration. The next tab over is the deconstruct tab. And this is where you can deconstruct or break down a piece of armor you have looted or purchased. By doing this, you gain inspiration and you will receive some of the materials back, such as cloth, wood, ingots, style materials, upgrade materials, or even sometimes trait materials. The higher the level of piece of gear, the higher the amount of the inspiration you will receive. You will sometimes loot items with the intricate trait on it. Deconstructing an item with an intricate trait will give you more inspiration than a similar piece of armor with the sa at the same level without that trait. I also do need to add that you cannot level up professions by making armor and weapons and breaking down what you make. You make like next to no inspiration breaking down your own crafted items. If you do have the opportunity, sometimes you will see people asking to swap items or to be a crafting buddy. What they do is craft armor, uh, then trade it to each other to break down. Breaking down looted items or items someone else has made is how you get the most inspiration. Be careful in this window. This window will show you items in your bags and in your bank. So if you're if you're leaving something in your bank um, to save for a rainy day, um, you can accidentally deconstruct it here if you're not paying attention. The only place that you can place items that will not show up in the crafting station will be items that you place in your housing storage. The next tab over is the improvement tab and this is where you take a piece of gear you have crafted and upgrade the quality. You can also improve any uh, armor weapons you loot or purchase. So here you can see the piece of gear I just crafted. In order to make it legendary, I first have to make it fine, then superior, then epic, and then finally legendary. So you, you will need all four types of upgrade materials in order to make it legendary. So taking the item I just made, I will select it. By default, it will put in the max amount of materials it takes to guarantee a 100% chance at upgrade. You can click the minus button and remove some, but if you choose to try and upgrade an item with less than a 100% chance, you run the risk of failing and you will lose the material, materials used to upgrade and it will destroy the piece of gear you made and you will have to start all over. I never recommend using any less than it takes to get 100%. The amount of materials it takes to guarantee a 100% chance starts out super high, and as you increase your points in the passive skill, tannin, resin, or temper expertise, the amount decreases and becomes more reasonable. I don't recommend upgrading anything until you have point spend and expertise as it's a waste of upgrade, upgrade materials. The next tab over is the research tab, and this is where you select the item you wish, wish to research the trade of and research it. In order to research an item, you first have to either purchase or loot an item with that trait you wish to research on it. So if I want to learn cloth boots in training, I first have to get a pair of training cloth boots. Uh, then it will allow me to research it. Nernhoned is not a dropped trait, and if you wish to learn this trait, you will have to have someone make it for you or purchase an item uh, off the uh, guild store with the trait on it. This can be expensive as Nerncrux only has a chance to drop off harvesting nodes in Craglorn only. I have completed all of the woodworking and clothier and am currently finishing up blacksmithing armor and now will work on blacksmithing weapons. But here in the upper right hand corner of the box it will show you how many items are currently being researched and how many items you are allowed to research at one time. It will show you an hourglass by the items that are currently being researched and if you click on the item it will show you the trait that is currently being researched and how long there is left until completion. The last tab in all three stations is uh, where you craft furniture. Each profession will make different things. Furnishing patterns will make different types of cloth or leather related housing items such as tapestries, baskets, beds, curtains, carpets, bookcases, uh, 
Woodworking blueprints will make wood-related items like carts, uh, street posts, chairs, tables, beds, bookcases, torches. <laughs> Blacksmithing diagrams will make metal-related items such as sconces, chandeliers, candles, lanterns, pots, pans, urns, anything like that. Furniture, furniture crafting recipes are a little more difficult and some recipes require that you have knowledge in two or even three different professions. For instance, a bed could require you to be woodworker 5 and tailor 3, blacksmithing 1. It will only allow you to learn what recipes for which you have spent the appropriate points in and are able to craft. Furnishing rep recipes can drop from mobs, containers, pickpocketing, and various other places. So how do you level fast and efficiently? Well, we already talked about deconstructing armor and crafting it. These will both be great ways to get crafting inspiration. Another great way to get inspiration is doing your crafting dailies, which are called writs. In order to do or see the daily crafting writs, you will first need to become certified in a profession. You cannot pick up the crafting certification quests until you are level 6. Once you reach level 6, travel to your capital city, which will be uh, Davin's Watch, Vocal Guard, or Daggerfall, depending on your alliance. You can become certified in all professions, but can only have one certification quest at a time. You will find the equipment certifier, that will be woodworking, blacksmithing, and clothier, in or outside the Fighters Guild. If you also want to become certified in enchanting, alchemy, or provisioning, that NPC will be in or outside of the Mages Guild. If you already are crafting level 10, you will have the option at these NPCs to skip the quest and have her instantly make you certified. These quests normally ask you to craft a few small items for the quest giver, and once complete, you will be certified. You will be able to see the daily crafting uh, quests from the boards in town. These writs will appear daily and have you crafting items based on your crafting level. When you turn in these quests, you will receive inspiration, the materials based on the profession, and sometimes you will get a survey report. These survey reports will be like treasure maps, and when you go to the location in the survey report, you will find a ton of harvestables related to that profession. When you get higher level, you have the chance to get gold materials from the rewards called Master Writs. Master Writs are like the writs you complete daily, but are a little more challenging and require you to craft higher level quality items and sometimes set items and in a specific motif style. They reward writ vouchers, which can be redeemed for real, really great items at the writ vendor. You don't need to worry about these Master Writs just yet if you're a beginning player. Now let's talk about some helpful add-ons that can make your life a little easier while crafting. The first one I will talk about goes along with the writs which we just talked about and that add-on is called Dogbond's Lazy Writ Crafter and I actually didn't know about this add-on until about two weeks ago. Before I installed this add-on I was doing my daily writs and they felt like such a chore. I was always um, having to go back into the quest log to find, out, find my quest, see what I was supposed to craft and it was just really annoying. Well, this add-on once installed will uh, auto make all the quests. Will auto take all the quests when you arrive at the rip board, and when you go into the crafting station, it will just start making all the items automatically that are needed for the writ. It's seriously amazing. And it doesn't stop there. Once you complete uh, your writs and go to turn them in, it will also open all the containers you may receive as a reward. It's pretty darn awesome and will make your life 100% better if you plan on doing multiple profession daily writs. The next add-on I recommend is I Item Saver. Remember how all those different banked items or items in your inventory were showing up on the Deconstruct tab? This uh, add-on will allow you to lock a piece of gear and it saves it from accidentally being sold or deconstructed. I had the unfortunate incident where I accidentally deconstructed some things. I had, it had taken me a while just to get because it showed up in this window and I wasn't paying attention. Uh, this will keep accidents like that from happening. A lock locked item will not show up on the deconstruct window. The next add-on is Research Assistant. 
This will add a colored square next to the item which has a trait that you have not yet learned. If you see a black box, that means you have researched it already and you are safe to deconstruct or trash that item. If you see a uh, red or a yellow box, that means you can research the trait and you can save the item for future research. This keeps you from accidentally breaking down or selling an item that you want to save for research. The next one is research timer and this will show you uh, the remaining time left on any items you are researching without having to go back to the station to find out. Um, it's pretty handy when you're first starting and you have those um, kind of, it's, it's a shorter time in between um, researching. The next add-on is AI Research Grid, and this uh, add-on will allow you to view all the items in different professions and what you have researched and what you still need to research. This is really handy so you don't have to sit there and go through each item um, at each station to find out what items you still need to research and what crafting sets you can um, go ahead and craft. If you're very new to the game and do not know how to install add-ons, I've already completed a guide for that and you can view that guide by clicking on the exclamation point here in the upper right hand corner and it'll take you to that guide. And that's it guys. I know that was a lot of information and I really hope that it helped you out some and that you learned something today. Uh, just remember one important thing, always be researching. Even if you don't plan on um, crafting in a certain profession, research something in that profession at all times. You guys have a great day. Don't forget to drop a like and a sub if you guys enjoyed or if you did actually learn something or if it helped you out any. Um, also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Um, I post my videos up there when I complete them and also some other shenanigans. And don't forget to also check out my uh, Twitch channel. I do stream regularly live on Twitch and I'm an ESO stream team member. So I have access to really cool codes and giveaways. Um, and that is twitch.tv slash shimmer with three M's. We do some fun things on my channel uh, like Murder Face Monday, which is a PvP stream with viewers. Um, and all kinds of things like that. But you guys have a great day, and I will see you in Tamriel. Bye!